lights on. That's better. Well, hello, man cavers. What are we doing today? Apron approved. We're going to have a little go on this lathe again. I have been practicing, but I don't know how successful I've been. So let's have a look and get going. Ah, yeah. Maintenance first. Are we getting a good drip? Oh, yes. That'll do nicely. Well, hello, man cavers, and what are we doing? I'm going to show you a couple of pieces that I have turned up on the lathe. Doing a bit of practicing. This is half a bolt, which was very bent. Yep. But I've managed to get a little bit of a finish on here. A little bit of a finish on there. Not brilliant. Then I moved on a bit, trying a different bit and a different speed. And this has come much better. I don't know whether you can see this. Bearing in mind, these were just old rusty bolts. So probably not a good quality steel. As you can see, that's the bolts it was made from. Here we've started to come a bit liney, but I think I'm getting the hang of this turning business just a scope. Certainly not enough for you guys to sort of copy me because that's a big no-no. I will. Let me move this carriage back a little, if it'll go. I will show you a little something I got the other day. Hey -ya. Here we go, from auction, what did we get? We got a set of these little, little jobby 10 thou calipers, another set here, well this is not, oh that's the more delicate one, look this does, I don't know, something really accurate that one, this one's a little bit more cruder, with some magnetic stand, there you go, haven't weighed up yet how that all works. And I think that's going to be a much more advanced stage of where I need to be at the minute. So what are we doing today? What are we going to be turning? Somewhere here, I have found an old piece of brass that I was going to turn. And here is the bit of brass in question. It's a bit of hex. I don't know what that is across there, 35 mil, I think. We're going to try. I mean, a bit of hex brass is no good to anybody. So I'm going to chuck this up and see if I can turn that down to a nice smooth round piece. So let's get this. Let's get this chucked up. Make sure the three jaw chuck will actually hold it. Oh yeah, that's holding. I was worried that weren't going to hold it central. Right, I think that'll do us. Let's double check, make sure he's tight. Then we'll fire the beast up. You'll also be pleased to know that I have put a switch in. Here we are. So the lathe is now wired to this switch. So when I turn the switch on, he comes on. So there you go. I know, safety first. And yep, we are safety. Where are we going to get you where you can get a good view? You will notice the other lathe I had on the trolley has gone. And I have sold that and took an old Honda generator in as part exchange. Right, I don't think you're going to be in my way there. So I'm going to turn this down. Get the highest point. 
I'm using a carbide bit here, engage the power feed so I can do it manually from this end. And let's see if we can make some chips. Here we go. Safety glasses. The drippers are on. We'll go in 20 foul. See if we can get this into some sort of round. I aren't going anywhere deep enough here, am I? Let's wind him back and go in a bit more. Here we go. She's making a clickety clackety sound. I can already tell that this brass is turning so much easier than a rusty old bolt. Wow. That is turning so much easier. I'm doing this actual time as well. Because when I was watching videos on how people use lathes, I used to get annoyed when they sped it up. So I was like, I want to see how quick you're actually going. I always found it quite annoying that people sped that up. Now, we're taking a cut now. We're going in a little bit deeper. There we are. Oh yeah, we're turning deeper now. How far are we off being round? I don't think we're too far off being round. We're starting to get a shine. You can certainly take some depth off of this, I must admit. There we go. We're starting to come nice and even now, look at that. I think we've just about got rid of the hex. Wow. There we go. I think now we can face this end off. deep enough. There we go. I think we're just about facing. We've got a little nub in the middle to get rid of. Of course this did have a little hole in it. There we go. We're facing off now. Then we'll take this bit of brass out of the chip. We'll put a little chamfer on here as well. That's all that separates us from the animals. There we are. Let's have a look at what we've got, guys. Wow, there we go. Here is our turned bit of brass. Considering we started as a hex, we didn't have to take too much off of that. And we've actually... It's got a few lines in it, but I think if I decrease the feed speed, here's our end, that's not faced off particularly well. So let's get her back in there. Get this carriage out of the way. There we are, get this back in. 
and see if we can get her a bit smoother. We're back in. All right, let's go again. I'm doing this feed manually. And we're going to take a very light cut. There we go. We'll go nice and steady with this. See if we can get a nicer finish. I'll stop halfway so we can compare the finishes. Take another slight cut. I'm going really, really slow with the power feed now. All manual. All right, we're down to that shoulder. Let's do a really light pass again. a finishing pass like Tubal Kane he does a finishing pass there we go and let's try and face off this end a little bit as well Go deep enough on that last one because that was quite a rough end on that, anyhow. There we go. Right. Now let's have a look at what we got. Wow, that is so much better. That is so much better, guys. There we are. Considering that for someone who's basically had about three hours plan on this thing over the last few days, the finish actually looked better in the flesh than it does on camera. It's not mirrored finish, but it's pretty damn good. I'm very happy with that. And from what I've seen other turners do, and they don't get much better than that on brass, they end up sort of using oil and emery cloth to polish it up a bit. I know, I'm sitting it down on the ways, but very gently. I think we need to have a quick clean-up of all this brass. Because there's a lot of brass here. Look at all that. I'm going to keep all these brass shavings. Why, I do not know. I'll put them in a pot. I'll put them in a pot and then, I don't know, do something with them. <laughs> Can't even throw my damn swarf away, look. There we go, we're coming in. We've got plenty more around the backside. Look at all this chipping off here.
Wow. Tire this brass though, it seems. Seems very nice to work with. It really does. I can see why people tell you to practice on brass. Problem is, it is very expensive brass. Oh, there's some steel mixed in with that. I mustn't mix that in there. That's no good. Yeah, it's quite expensive brass. Um, there you go. Yeah, so we have all this brass swath. I think I need to find a little tub to put that in to keep. Ah! So there we are guys, I've had my first go at turning brass. And yeah, oh, why does that look so bad on camera? Yet when I look at it, it's pretty mirrored. Ah. Anyhow, I'm really happy that we've gone from this old manky old hex bit which is all bashed up and knocked around to this. And considering how rough that was on the end, it was like the end of a project, so it was raised and lowered and it had been centre drilled. I faced him off just about right. Unfortunately, I've took my chamfer off, but we can always have that. I don't want to waste too much of this stuff, because that is expensive. But he was never going to use it in hex form anyhow, so we've turned it down to a bar stock. Or probably at some point, Put the good end in the chuck and turn the rest down to this. So I've got a nice little bar. Right, what are we going to look at? Mm. Right, the other lathe, what sat on the trolley, like I said, has gone. And, yep, I'm pleased to say that one of my channel viewers have actually come down and bought it. And I part exchanged it with a non-running old honda generator she's from haver hill generators there you go she is a honda and i took that in part exchange he said it did run but there was a governor issue with it so what that means i do not know i haven't tried to start it but there you go we will see anyhow that is what's happened to the other lathe because I am over the moon. Turn my oilers off, look. If not, I'm going to have oil everywhere. That's what happened to the other lathe. So let's have another look. Let me show you a couple of pieces that I also bought at the rally. I haven't showed you these yet, I don't think. But I did get some other bits from Wheaton off a store that sold a lot of lathe parts. Now then, you will notice there's a moss type of chuck there. There is also... One of them chucks in the back of the lathe, because I've already put one in. But I bought that one at Wheating, and I bought this one at Wheating. And I'll tell you for why I bought two, because I see this one. And as you can see, the end of the Morse taper is well and truly chewed, where it's been in its lock and got jammed up and spun round. But I just wanted the chuck, and I thought this would get me out of a muddle. And then I bought it cheap, and then the next stall, I see another one which was better, so I bought that one as well. But we have a nice, and this is a genuine Jacobs chuck as well, it's not a Mickey Mouse, it's a proper Jacobs. There we go. I also got, these things are horrendously expensive, carbide tips. There we go. Um, I did get about four of these actually with the lathe. But I went round the junk stalls and there was people who weren't selling either related items. They were selling tools. And one had this full box here. And I said, what do you want for them? He said, I don't even know what they are. He says, two quid. I said, done. So I got a box of new tips for two quid. And yes, I do have the tool to fit them. And then I also found these on the same stall. And said, what do you want for these ones? And he said, you bought them other old bits. He said, you can have them for 50 pence. So I got another four for 50 pence. Very happy. Then I went on a stall that sold a lot of new lathe parts. And I bought myself some drill bits. Three and a half mil. 
two and a half mil and two mil there's 10 in each there very good and i think these were three for a tenner so i got them also on that stall which i found interesting i said have you got a live center because i didn't have a live center with a morse taper and i had a look and come across this one now then you will notice it says skoda i never knew skoda made machine parts but they do or they did look inside we have a beautiful Brand new, all stock. And it's even got the Skoda logo on there. Live centre. And that feels fantastic quality. This has obviously never been used. It's razor sharp. I say it has never been used at all. But it's Skoda. I never knew Skodas did machine and parts. Did you guys know that Skoda did machine and parts? I mean, I'm going back to the days where Skodas were probably made in Czechoslovakia, not half Volkswagen like now, due to the age of the box and the font. There was actually, stuck on the bottom here, a brown, an old weathered brown sticker, but it seems to have come off and I can't find it. So it's a shame because that was a nice old sticker on there with all part numbers and stuff from Skoda. If I find it, I'll put a picture of it in. But if not, there we are. We have a live centre made by Skoda. I didn't know Skoda made anything like that. So we're going back to our bit of brass and we're going to wrap this video up. Here we are. I think my lathe turning skills are coming on leaps and bounds. And I'm very happy with it. I'm really enjoying metal turning. You have seen, I don't know whether I showed you this last time. We have a small stock of steel here. We have a big old bit of bar here. I don't know whether I showed you this before, but we have a nice big bit of bar here. All my round stock is this stuff here. I think this is three quarter inch. This looked like, I don't know, half inch. This is probably, I don't know, a bit over house. No, I don't know. I ain't got a clue. That's probably quarter. That could be half. This could be three quarter. That could be inch. I just think I think I got that all wrong. But we've got some nice bits of off cuts there. But, uh, yeah. I need off cuts. Of I need off cuts, guys, because I don't like buying lengths which are like a meter long and chopping them into six inch or three inch bits to practice. So if any of you guys know where I can get brass off cuts from. No sort of, you know, the stuff what goes to scrap, you know, it's, yeah, I don't want to buy full lengths of brass rod for extortionate amounts of money. I need an old engineering company that has a lot of little off cuts, three or four inches, it's no good to them, they probably weigh it in, I'm happy to purchase. Anyhow, that's going to be it for this video, I think. So that's it guys, thank you very much for watching, like and subscribe, and we have another little job coming up soon, building some light boxes, because I have managed to get some low voltage bulbs. Right, we'll see you next time, it's bye bye from me, and it's bye bye from, hmm, what are we going to say, what are we going to zoom in on? Let's go, the my Ford, ha! Ah. Ah, and ha ah. ha.